My foe's blade sliced down, and I pivoted to one side, barely avoiding the edge. The wind from its passage whiffed through the holes in my visor. I reposted and almost tagged him, but he parried the blow in the nick of time. <sighs> you're getting better, Adam, but you're still not quite good enough to beat me. Not yet, anyway. Let's talk more action, old man. Adam grinned as he launched into a series of strikes, pushing me back. Old man? I was still two years shy of thirty. I'd show him old. I fought back, parrying, feinting, and lunging. We were evenly matched, and Adam's movements showed me that he enjoyed the fencing match as much as I did. He improved progressively with every bout, and I was proud to have helped him reach such a high level. Finally, after an intense exchange, I got a point. Whew, well done, I praised. That was a great bout. You're really improving, Adam grinned and bowed. Thanks, Professor. I guess I need to keep practicing. I clapped his back. Yes, practice makes perfect. Keep at it, and soon you'll give me a proper fight. We returned to the sidelines where I spotted my other students. They were all hard at work, trying to hone their skills as best they could. I was proud of them, and satisfied that my little fencing club was turning out some excellent fencers. Maybe one day, some of them would become world-class athletes. If they didn't, they were still learning important skills and having a great time doing it. That was enough for me. All right, everyone, that's it for today. I'll see you all on Thursday for more practice, so be sure to come prepared and ready to learn. Have a great day. I clapped and sent them off with a smile. Adam thanked me again before leaving, and I waved goodbye as he walked out the door. As soon as everyone was gone, I gathered the equipment to put away until our next session. After everything was tidy, I grabbed my bag and headed out the door, eager to return to my research lab for some well-deserved time alone with my work. First, a shower was in order. Adam might not be able to beat me yet, but he was getting closer all the time, and I'd broken a sweat during that bout. My work could wait until I got cleaned up, excited as I was. It wasn't going anywhere, and the longer I waited for the power to build up in the capacitors I'd built, the better my results were likely to be. I stepped into the shower, the warmth of the water cascading down my body like a soothing massage. My tension melted away as I let the stream slowly wash off all traces of fencing, leaving me free to ponder the experiment that had consumed my thoughts for the past two years. Trying to build a sonic analog of a black hole was a daunting task. I'd come close in previous experiments and knew I could do it this time if only I had enough power. The experiment would take everything I had, money, time, and energy. In return, it promised something magical, a peek into an otherworldly phenomenon with more accuracy and clarity than anyone else had ever seen. It was a risk worth taking. I toweled off and threw on work clothes. My stomach grumbled. It was close to dinner time and lunch had been many hours ago. I wasn't ready to call it quits for the day until I'd flipped the switch on my creation.